when it, it's Christmas time, and next thing you know, they're, they're having 70 belt tests at $100 per belt test. Is that person worth the, that stripe or that belt? What's up, YouTube? Your boy Midwest Kong, highfeelife.com, promo code Kong, Midwest underscore Kong on Instagram. Back again, man, after a good training session, Professor, former Olympian, Ty Williams. Right. Absolutely. You always, got, you always got to put the cool stuff in it. Like, that's how I get. I'm using Ty to get okay. He was an Olympian. You can't say that about too many black belts. So check this out. So this has been an ongoing discussion. I've been seeing it through Instagram, um, some, of the, some of the blogs and stuff like that. A lot of people, it's fine they had a different perception on belt testing, right? Um, it, whether it's a test or the requirements of test. So I think it goes about... It, it's, it's wherever, whoever's teaching, whoever, what's your preference. I feel like jujitsu is a canvas you paint, okay? My personal, what we want to discuss is how we personally feel about belt testing. So me, personally, I am solely against people being promoted. And don't kill me, anybody. Again, this is just my opinion. And this is how I came up with jujitsu. People who are being promoted who don't train live. And mainly I'm saying that about actors. I've seen popular actors become getting promoted, and I know they train jujitsu for movie roles and stuff like that, but then they're getting promoted on top of that, and I'm not a fan of purchasing belts. Right. Um, I feel like if you can't do the move on somebody live, then what is the point of doing jujitsu? I know a lot of sports you can demonstrate. Right. And you can demonstrate jujitsu, but ultimately I feel like judo and jujitsu, I know judo has kata. I feel like that you have to be able to do because this is ultimately a self-defense as well. So if you cannot do it on somebody resistant, I truly don't feel like you should be promoted. And I also feel like if you don't know the base of jiu-jitsu, takedowns, things like that, we're not saying to be takedown artists. We're saying to have an understanding of jiu-jitsu. I feel like those are things for me that will be a requirement for me to promote. What you right. about you? Hundred percent. Coming up, you know, my first uh, my first professor was Soneka down in Knoxville, Tennessee, two thousand two. The way, he's, the way his system was set up, it was definitely live training. You know, that was a big yeah, part of it. Yeah. It was curriculum, and it was attendance, mm -hmm. right? So you had a combination. And then when I went over to Luis Pajaras, and I happen to have his shirt on today, yeah. so shout out to Luis. Uh, it, you know, you, you have, just like you said, you have to be able to perform under pressure. Yep. You know, now, if I've got, now I do, when I grade, I do grade differently from a 25-year-old to a 70-year-old. Absolutely. So there's Absolutely. a difference there. But I still want that 70-year-old to do situational training. So if mm -hmm. we do mount escapes, somebody's going to be on top of you, and you better be able to you know, show me that you yeah, know the absolutely. technique. But some schools will say, well, you know, I'm beating that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I took him down with a double leg. I held him down. Mm -hmm. Why is he above me? I'm like, well, you're only coming, you know, once a, once a month. Yeah. You know, and the reason I like the curriculum side of it, so, it, you know, let me break it down to like this. You're doing it with live resistance so yeah. I can see you do the technique. Two attendants. And then tied with that. I really don't do that much testing, but what I'll do is, is I'll say, maybe I'll pull somebody aside and say, show me three sweeps from closed guard. Yeah. Okay, they know the curriculum. Hey, sh understand show me three just... takedowns. Mm -hmm. Show me three submissions from half guard. Yeah. Th show me three sweeps from half guard. Yep. And then the more they go up the belt, I'll say, show me three combinations. So if somebody defends, then, they're, then I'm starting to see them put the game together on top of the other two, which is attendance and live training, and then that's how they go up the belt level. But if you don't show up to my school or you show up once in a while or just looking for belts, it's not going to happen here. Yeah, I got to yeah, see yeah. dedication. I got to see discipline. I, got, I want you to be a good student. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be a bully because you don't, yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. last long. So, right. there's a, you know, to me, it's that, that full circle student that, that, that's got all the attributes to be able to get promoted underneath me. And I was fortunate to have great instructors yep. that taught me that because I have been to schools where there's really no rhyme or reason why they're getting belts. That's and true. then there's schools that charge a lot of money. And you start seeing when it, it's Christmas time, and next thing you know, they're, they're having 70 belt tests at $100 per belt test. Is that person worth the, that <laughs> strength for that belt? And I say no. So here at Mineral Jiu-Jitsu, dedication, attendance, doing it during live training, and, and, and knowing that curriculum. And then the last thing I'll say is this, because you and I are going to compete coming up in July. Yeah. I don't put a lot of emphasis on competition, but all my students are going to compete this weekend. Yeah. They'll ask me, you know, coach, what do you think about competition or the ones that are on the fence? I'll say, you know, it's, sometimes it's a lot of money for people to spend. Exactly. So what I'll say is if you can maybe 
maybe compete at the beginning of your white belt, at the end of your white belt. That's two. Yeah, yeah. Beginning of your blue belt, the end of your blue belt. belt. That's, that's, you know, so that way they can see the progression. So that way they know that they're, all the hard work's paying off. So that's kind of my, that's me in a nutshell. That's I feel I like, I feel like when it comes to competition, like the goalpost is always moved. We, we come to a day that is, when I first started competing, it was a grapple's quest. It was a Naga. Blanky's tournament, yeah. Dion's tournament, and it was a Naga, right? So we had four places to compete once a year. Right. We had to drive on the East Coast to go to the grapple's quest. Right. Naga would pop up everywhere. Naga was a really good tournament because they used to have a Jeff Monson. We used to see oh, these yeah, guys in tournaments. Awesome tournament. So when I started competing, I was competing in the advanced division, my second year of training. So I competed against a lot of stuff. So now IBJJF comes around. So now the goalpost is moving out. So remember, you go to Naga. Remember, it's mostly no gi. Right. You go to Naga. You compete against Jeff Munts and uh, some of the top guys top around. Guy. Uh, who? Uh, uh, God, Gabriel Gonzaga was in right. this bracket. You know. Oh yeah. You go against those guys, and it's like, and the grapplers go the same way. And then you had Arnold's. Then you Arnold's. had the Arnold's. Arnold's yeah. You know what I mean? So now it's like, oh, you want to know? So what? Now it's this tournament now that matters. Right. This tournament. So I, I feel like with competition, I feel like compete when you want to compete. Um, test yourself definitely because it's only so much you can do in the gym. Mm-hmm. I do think you need to get out there, um, but I don't think it needs to be so much of an emphasis on it because the goalpost is always moved. Right. Now we in a stage where guys are making big money doing submission only tournaments, one on one matches. Right. This is perfect because now guys who train their butts off are starting to get paid to do it, and right. that's and that's, and that's the the top top. That's level. the top so, top. Well, level. We're talking about promotions of the the ninety nine point nine percent. They exactly. really aren't going to make any money. I That's, hope they get good enough to right, make money. Right. But we're talking about the, the normal person that walks right. in off the street, they sign the waiver, and then they start working hard. And so that's the reason we're talking about show me in live training. Show me live training. Show me in sparring. Show me in situational training. Show me your attendance. And show me you know the art. Just don't show me you know a double leg and you know how to dump somebody in their head and then say you're a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Yeah. You know? And the last thing I'll say on another way that you can sharpen your skills up without competing and spending a lot of money is I encourage my students to go to other schools. Good you talking about getting fly. butterflies? Yeah. When you walk in with your fresh yeah. new blue belt, yeah. or your four stripes on your white, or maybe you just get your, per- and you go to some other school, that becomes yeah. almost like a competition because mm-hmm. they look at you like, okay, this new this new guy's coming in from yeah. another school, so you're going to be challenged that way too. So that's another option you can have to see, how, and then they can come back and tell you how it went, yep. and that's another a good feedback to promotion. And guys, let me just let me just close, guys, with some guys. Don't put so much pressure on yourself in jujitsu. Uh, again, like I always, I always stress, the reason why I always stress about him being an Olympian is because that's the highest level of the sport that he was in, and he represented the entire country in Olympics, which is a huge, we all know what the Olympics mean. So coming to jiu-jitsu is just another way to continue to be an athlete. So when you have something outside of that, it's just really no pressure. Don't put so much pressure on something that only you probably and, and, and your group of friends who you train with do at the end of the day, who gives a shit what anybody says? You put that gear on, you get on the mat, and if you have an instructor that tells you you ain't shit for competing, then you should probably find another school. At the end of the day, we human beings, man. You know what I mean? Financially, we in a we in a pandemic era. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to compete. You compete when you're comfortable because pressure. You probably never win a gold medal going out there with pressure about what everybody else thinks. Because right. at the end of the day, most people who pressure you to compete, they really don't compete. Because the people who compete, they understand that you don't need that pressure to go out there and be successful. Tyler's always great. All right. It's always great, Good man. Stuff. Make sure you go to highfreelife.com, promo code Kong. Like I said, man, Cali, man, I know you got the good new gear, man. I need a shirt, man. Just give me a shirt. I just need a shirt. You got, you got incense for the car now? How you know my car? I want my car smell like chocolate berry. Hmm? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Midwest underscore Kong on Instagram. Check out Professor Tyler. We're going to get Tyler back on his YouTube. Maybe. He go- <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you go to Hyperlight Account, promo code Cone, like and subscribe to the channel. We need Kong. The world needs him.